I thank Dr. Nivian for asking me to do this video. This short video is on converting an accidental PCR to a PCC. It is easier than it seems. Here we are having a patient where I have an accidental PCR. I was planning to put a toric lens inside him. So the first tip is don't remove the phaco probe and make the anterior chamber shallow. Keep the phaco probe inside the eye. To visualize better, I am putting methyl cellulose on the corneal surface. Then I am taking a micro forceps with my left hand going through the side port and entering the anterior chamber. Tip 2 is never use an ultratas forceps. And the third tip is please create a convenient side port to enter the eye. So if this side port was not convenient, I would have used the one millimeter stab knife to make a new entry and go into the anterior chamber through a convenient side port. Now I am trying to grasp the PC flap that is floating about in the anterior chamber. You can see the irrigation as aspiration probe inside the eye. As I am grasping it, the PCR has become triangular and slightly bigger, but don't give up. You can see the horizontal corneal marking on the surface of the cornea. So I regrasp the flap that is floating inside the eye and I complete the CCC successfully. And there we are, it is done. I'm moving the eye down so that we can see the, uh, the curvilinear capsulorexis on the posterior capsule in this particular view. A toric lens was successfully implanted in this particular patient. It's important that we have a titanium or a steel micro forceps and if you have a micro scissors also with you in a separate emergency tray, you'll find it very useful. My friends, this movie is about how to do an easy posterior capsulorexis. You need the proper tools and they include methyl cellulose, micro forceps and micro scissors. We have to make a separate entry away from the main incision. It's important not to use a neutratus forceps and we have to remember to lift up the posterior capsule when you're actually doing the capsulorexis. I only use methyl cellulose. I do not use a cohesive viscoelastic. The first step is to overfill the anterior chamber with methyl cellulose. Lift up one of the margins of the torn posterior capsule. At this point, you will see the methyl cellulose flow into the Berger's space behind the posterior capsule. As soon as we grab the lip of the torn edge, we have to gently lift it about half a millimeter above the plane of the posterior capsule, away from the vitreous. We have to lift it up towards the pupillary margin. Posterior capsular plaques do not tear. They have to be cut either with a micro scissors the best way or they can be cut with a sharp edge of your capsular excess 26 gauge needle. In the last three years, I have done around eight posterior capsulorexis when indicated, and I have never lost vitreous till now. And I believe any anterior segment surgeon can do this if he remembers to lift up the posterior capsule while cutting it, and if he remembers to make a separate, convenient side port for the micro forceps and never uses the main port. This particular patient had a small pupil and had good vision after cataract surgery.
Please remember you have to make a separate entry. Do not use the main port and do not use the ultratus forceps while doing a posterior capsulorexis. When I try to puncture the posterior capsule in this particular patient, I found that the plaque could be peeled off from the posterior capsule. I always try to tailor the size of the PCC to the size of the undilated pupil of the patient. So very large PCCs are rarely necessary. They can usually be between 3 and 4 millimeters in size. Most of the plaque came off, I didn't feel like opening up the posterior capsule. Although the center looks clear, I had to do an early YAG posterior capsulotomy in this patient. My friends, get your micro forceps ready and I hope this short film will encourage you all to start doing PCCs when indicated. It is simple and it is safe and within the capacity of all anterior segment surgeons.